Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Code Man Movies. Um, I've actually, like, done this within a week's time here. That's, like, I'm so proud of myself. Um, a very big Batman-filled episode filled with some Flash and some other movies that came out within the last couple weeks here. Um, so, a lot to get to. Uh, we're going to get right to it. Um, drinking today, guys, I am drinking a blue raspberry lemonade uh, slushy and um, a, a raspberry iced tea. Um, no alcohol because, well, I work tomorrow and I work outside. It's 90 degrees here. I don't want to get, you know, dehydrated or anything like that. So, got to start the night off properly and um, the correct way so that I don't get over dehydrated, blah, 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 blah. But anyways, guys, let's get talking. First, we're going to start with 1989's Batman. Um, decided to rewatch uh, Michael Keaton's Batman since he is in the new Flash movie. Uh, I, I think I talked about this movie actually last year before the Batman came out. And I enjoy Michael Keaton's two Batman movies. I don't love these movies, though. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that love these movies. They grew up with them. And I get that. Uh, personally, I find these a little too campy at times. Uh, that is the comics, though. I, I also think uh, Vicki Vale is kind of just a character. She's not really doing all that much. She's not the worst character of all time. Um, but, you know, she's just kind of there. Uh, Jack Nicholson as Joker is great. It's a very different kind of Joker than something like, you know, Heath Ledger or even like Jared Leto's kind of low Joker, but it, it is still a really interesting and cool Joker. Um, I personally do not like the little twist that they have in this movie of Joker is the one who killed Bruce Wayne's parents. I know it's Jack Napier or whatever it is, but I, I don't love that twist. I find that just a little too convenient and such like that. Uh, I think the world of Gotham is really cool in this movie. It doesn't feel like a real city, which is also kind of a negative in a sense, but I enjoy what Gotham feels and looks like in this movie. Um, I think Tim Burton is a director that sometimes goes crazy. We'll talk about that really more in a second, but I think he's a little more subdued in this one. I think he was a, a good choice for this movie. Um, Again, it gets a little too cartoony at times, but at least Tim Burton understood the character and knew what he, you know, it seems like he is a fan of the character. And that's always a good thing, in my opinion, in my book. Um, so, yeah, trying to think what else I can really say about this movie. Uh, Michael Keaton was someone that was very much, uh, nobody liked the idea of him being cast. I think he is a decent Bruce Wayne and a decent Batman. Uh, again, he's not my favorite. He's not in either Bruce Wayne or Batman form. He, he works for both of it. I, I think there's nothing at all wrong with his Batman or his Bruce Wayne. I think it works for what it is. Um, the Batmobile looks really cool in this, I'll say that. Uh, his gadgets that he has are really cool. Where does he get all those toys? Um, I'm going to say something controversial here because Prince is from Minnesota. He, his literally hometown is, is hour and a half, two hours from where I used to live in Wisconsin. Um, I don't like Prince. I like a few of his songs. That is it. I don't like any of the songs in this movie. I think it takes, it, it, it takes it right out of the, takes me right out of the movie. Um, this feels like a very, it doesn't feel like a real city, a few, a real world. And the Prince music just makes me go, oh, okay, so they have Prince music in this world. I, I don't know. I just didn't love huh, the Prince soundtrack with this movie. Love the score by Danny Elfman. I think that's fantastic. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, I, I think this movie is, is really good. It's very solid. I'm trying to think what I gave it last year. I think I gave it like a 7 or 8 out of 10. And I'm going to stay at that 7 or 8 out of 10. It, it, I don't know. It goes back and forth for me. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of good stuff in here. But then there's just a couple things that I, it just feels so cartoony at times. And so ridiculous. And it just doesn't fully work for me. The script, I feel like, is also, there's things that are just said that it just doesn't fully work for me. Uh, I like the finale. I like the finale isn't 
necessarily anything crazy. It starts at the parade and then goes up to the, the tower. And, and the way Joker dies, I, I think, you know, it, it's the way he's defeated is an appropriate way, I guess. Um, so, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this movie. I, I don't love it. This is not one I rewatch all the time. I pretty much just rewatch it whenever a Batman movie comes out. Um, and now when Michael Keaton comes back as Batman. So, yeah, I'll give this one, again, I, I think I'm at an 8 out of 10 for this one. I really enjoy it, don't get me wrong. I don't love it, though, the way I think some people really do. Uh, Batman Returns, guys, this is a movie that I'm really going to have things that people don't like about it, because I borderline think this movie's just okay. Uh, I still think it's a good movie. I still like the world of Gotham that is set up here. Uh, I always forget every time I watch this movie that it's technically a Christmas movie. This entire movie takes place around Christmas. There are scenes where they're lighting up Christmas trees. There's constant snow throughout this movie. I mean, this is a Christmas movie. It's it's interesting. Uh, yeah, there's a lot more to talk about this one, though. Uh, again, Michael Keaton as Batman does great. Uh, Selena Kyle, the new character, is Catwoman. She's interesting. I mean, her origin, she's pushed out of a window, cats lick her back to life, and then she goes crazy. O okay. Um, Penguin's backstory is tragic, and I, he's very dark, but I think... He, I really actually do like Penguin. He's a little... There's some things, again, that he says that is a little too cartoony, a little too crazy for me, but I think Penguin is, is a great villain. I do like... Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. She's a very interesting character. I just don't love her origin. I don't like that she's just pushed out of a table, a, a, a building, and cats lick her back to life. I, I just don't get that. It's a little too nuts for me. Which is crazy, because, you know, if you guys want to get nuts, we'll get nuts. <sighs> um, Christopher Walken in this movie, um, I don't know. His character if, i don't know his 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 plot is just i don't know i don't know that i love christopher walken's character in this it, he's just a little too i don't know what it is i don't love his character he's a little too douchebaggy which i guess he's supposed to be but i, I don't know it, it, his character does not work for me for some reason in this movie he feels kind of just written in because we have selena kyle and we need to have a reason to bring Selena Kyle and Penguin together, kind of. And then, yeah. not 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 loving Christopher Walken's character. Um, Shrek is his name, I believe. Max Shrek. That sounds about right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Something I didn't say about the last one. That I should say about this one as well is the fight scenes are great. The special effects for what they had at the time look great. You can tell the uh, bat costume is very stiff. Uh, he very much moves very stiffly, he, uh, which, you know, it's of its time. The, the costumes are very much, you know, uh, form-fitting, and it's hard to move in them. Uh, I believe, like, Michelle Pfeiffer getting into that Catwoman suit took, like, forever, and she had to be, like, vacuum-sealed into it, essentially, which does not sound fun at all. Um... Yeah, I, you know, I understand why people like this movie. I just, it's a little too much for me. It goes a little too crazy for me. Um, again, I I want to like Catwoman more in this movie, but I, I just don't. Her motivation and such like that is so silly to me. Um, and just her origin is so weird to me. Um yeah, and I just don't think the, the flow of this movie, the flow and, and, and the pacing of this film is not quite as strong as the first. And I would like it to be a little bit stronger than what it is, I guess. And it just feels a little too long, I guess. There's a lot going on in this movie, and it's just a little too much for my liking. So yeah, I'm going to give this one like a 6 out of 10. I believe I either gave it a 6 or a 7 when I, I, I watched it last year. And I'm going to stick with that if that's what I did give it. I, you know, something that that I think people don't understand is opinions change over time. Sometimes you can like a movie more, like a movie less, you know, within a year's time. 
And but that's the reason why I'm not in film club anymore. It's because people did not get that my opinion could change and such like that. And I don't, I don't like that. So I don't know. I, I think my opinion has stayed the same on these movies, but I'm not sure. So for the love of God, do not go back and rewatch them and go, oh, you're a liar. No, my opinion's just changed or, you know, I feel differently about certain things. Yeah. Next up, guys, BVS, because Ben Affleck's Batman is in the newest uh, Flash movie. Also, Flash does make a little cameo in this movie. So I did rewatch this. This is the Snyder cut that I watched, the director's cut of BVS. Um, when I saw this movie in the theaters, I went, eh. Um, I liked Batman. Henry, I like uh, Bat, Cav ba ba Bat Cavill. Henry Cavill as Superman is great. I don't love Superman as character, but he, Henry Cavill is great. Ben Affleck as Batman is a great Batman, though, and that's really what I'll focus on for this because uh, he's the character in The Flash. Um, I, I, I think his Batman's awesome. I really do. People complained at the time that this Batman kills too much. Michael Keaton's Batman threw a guy into a pit, put a bomb in there, and exploded. He killed. Batman took a grappling gun hook thing and attached it to Joker, which eventually pulled him off the helicopter as he fell to his death. Batman's killed so many different times. I don't understand why this was such a big deal. I think it was just coming off the Nolan Batmans where he didn't kill, and that was very much a thing. Uh, but that was kind of a Nolan thing. Yes, that has showed up in comics before and such, but... It doesn't mean that is Batman. Chester got really excited and went to the window. I don't know why. There's nothing out there. We just went to the park and took a nice walk, and he, he got very hot. His eyes got pink and such, and I think he was a little dehydrated. He, uh, he did puke up a little bit, too, so I think he had uh, the starts of heat, heat stroke or whatever you want to call it, but I've got his temperature cooled down. He's currently wearing a cool bandana, so... He's back to his normal self. Aren't you, Chester? Yeah. Is he a good boy? Yeah, he was such a good boy. Chester's doing good. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, Batman specifically in this, uh, I, I like kind of what they did with Bruce Wayne's Batman here. Um, there's a bunch of little silly things in this movie, of course, that are, if we're talking about the movie as a whole, there's some really stupid stuff in this movie. The whole Martha thing, the whole... Uh, I, I hate that Clark Kent has no clue who Bruce Wayne is. Bruce Wayne is this big billionaire. You're telling me people don't... I mean, we know a bunch of big billionaires in the real world. Why don't these people know who these billionaires are with a city that's right across the river from them? Which I liked. I liked that Gotham City and, and um, Metropolis are essentially kind of like Chicago and Detroit. And I believe they actually filmed in Detroit. So that's not far from Chicago, period. And I think they filmed... There was one scene they did in Chicago or something like that. I forget. Anyways, um, I like that they did that in this movie. I, the introduction of Wonder Woman, I think, was great. The other characters, not so much, including The Flash. That was really stupid, in my opinion. Um, we all kind of know the backstory of this. Well, I think a lot of people know the backstory of this. If you don't, go look into it. It's very interesting stuff. Um, Zack Snyder was very much rushed into all this, and the movies kind of started suffering because of it. I think if Zack Snyder was given the chance, he could have made some really good movies, considering, um, what Zack Snyder... So yeah, guys, sorry about that. Something weird happened. I, like, took a picture of my watch. Yeah, okay. Anyways, um, considering what Zack Snyder's Justice League became and i think a lot of people agree that's a much better movie than the justice league um a movie i will not be talking about because i don't want to talk about that piece of crap um but yeah guys i, I think if Zack snyder was given the time i think he really could have made something interesting and unique um and he just wasn't given any time and it's really sad and unfortunate um but yeah this movie guys it, it's it's not that great. It's it's not a good movie, but I do like what they did with Batman. The introduction of Batman here was pretty awesome, in my opinion. And I wish like heck that we had gotten 
that solo Batman movie directed by Ben Affleck. I think it could have been really awesome. We'll probably, we're never going to get it. So, yeah, it's sad. It sucks. Um, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, guys, Batman vs. Superman, again, I kind of just want to talk about this movie because of Batman being in it. I did rewatch it. It is just a very eh movie. Lex Luthor in this movie, played by Jesse Eisberg, is so annoying. Not at all good, in my opinion. That was not a good choice by Zack Snyder, in my opinion. Um, yeah, the, the, the story of this movie... It, it, the, the setup of the movie is very interesting. The fact that, like, basically 9-11 happened, and Bruce Wayne was there, and now he's pissed off at Superman for it. I like that. I remember when this movie came out, a lot of people were like, why are they fighting? They're both good guys. And I'm like, guys, you've never gotten to an argument with a friend or a spouse or something like that? Like, come on. And then when you really get into the backstory of it, when Bruce Wayne's friends and, you know, not really family, his, you know, picked family uh, were killed in this 9-11, essentially, I'd be pissed too. Um, so yeah, I like a lot of things about this movie. I like the ideas of this movie. It just doesn't fully work out for me. But yeah, it's a movie I rewatched quite a few times though. There's some really good moments. The Batman scene at that warehouse is phenomenal. Um, I remember the trailers gave way too much of this movie away. There was nothing left to really... We knew the movie before we even saw the movie. It's kind of disappointing. And the trailers were actually better than the movie itself, which is really sad, but... Yeah, Batman vs. Superman, guys, again, this is the Zack Snyder cut, which is the only cut, in my opinion. I'll give it, like, a 5 out of 10. It's a very okay movie. It's not good. There's some really good stuff in there, though, guys. Like, if you haven't watched this movie, maybe check it out. There's just some really good, awesome stuff. The Batman workout montage is really awesome. Some good stuff in here. Just a little. I think Zack Snyder had all this stuff, and he just didn't get a chance to really do what he wanted and this sucks next up guys Zack Snyder's Justice League um I remember when Justice League came out I didn't even go see it in the theaters I really didn't I think that was like the first Batman movie I did not go see in a theater because I was just eh and it was very eh and this movie is so much better I would love to see this movie in a theater um the movie is way too long. It's four hours. I think if you take out the last half hour, which is basically post-credit scenes, I think it would have been better if they were actually post-credit scenes, which they kind of are in a sense, but it would have been better if the credits started rolling and then we start seeing these post-credit scenes in there. Um, but I get what Zack Snyder was doing. Zack Snyder knew he wasn't going to have this this was his moment, his time to shine, and he just threw everything in there that he could. No deleted scenes, just boom. And I just think this movie's so much better. I, I Flash is so much less annoying in this movie than he was in the Justice League. Justice League, I can't stand Flash. He's so flippin' annoying. Uh, Cyborg is, is much more flushed out. He is a character that... that He's such a tragic character, and we feel for him, and really is the heart of this movie at the end of the day, and I, I just think he's such a great character in this movie. Um, the decision to kill Superman at the end of the BVS was silly in the fact that they just kind of brought him back. The scene of them bringing him back is kind of cool and such, but it feels like something that maybe should have happened in Justice League Part 2 or something. Um... Which, who knows, maybe that's what was the idea, and, well, no, it couldn't have been. I don't know. That was, again, Zack Snyder made some decisions that I think were just a little too silly, and, yeah, we knew the Justice League were coming out with Superman in it, so it was just a little ridiculous at that plot point, I guess. Um, again, Batman's awesome. He's kind of the leader of this movie, essentially, and, you know, he's front and center, and he should be, because he is kind of the main character while cyborg is the heart of the movie i think batman is is technically kind of the main character i feel like i am like not even in frame i don't know i apologize this video is probably not gonna look the greatest but hey it is what it is um wonder woman great gal Gadot, i 
it sucks that she's not going to continue being Wonder Woman. Um, it really does. And she has just had an interesting career this year with the cameos. Just cameoing in every other movie with Fast X and Shazam. Um, yeah, she just had a year. Um, Jason Momoa was Aquaman. Was, he's kind of a cool Aquaman. I really do enjoy his Aquaman. I'm excited to see Aquaman 2 this year. Even though it's probably not going to be that great from what I'm hearing. It, James Wan's directing it, though, again. So the first one wasn't anything spectacular, though, either. It was just a fun kind of movie. But I haven't rewatched it very many times, I will say that. But anyways, guys, yeah. All these characters are, are, are really great. Uh, Zack Snyder flushed them out. The action is great. The visuals are so great. The, the motivation of Steppenwolf is so much better. Everything is way better done in this movie than it was in the Justice League. Um, you can tell Zack Snyder loves these characters, cares about these characters, and you can tell he did have a plan, and it was just, you know, taken away from him, essentially, because people are stupid. Um, yeah, guys, this was one of my favorite movies of 2021 as well. I, I really did enjoy this movie. Uh, the first time I watched it, I liked it, and I grew to love it. I think every time I watch this, I just, I feel like I like it more. The, the flaws are still there. Again, the, the Superman stuff being brought to life, he just shouldn't have been killed at the end of BVS, in my opinion. Maybe have done it at the end of Justice League Part 1, because I know it was supposed to be Part 1, Part 2. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how you could have fixed that, but that entire bit doesn't fully work for me. Um... Yeah, if you just take out those end credit scenes and the Martian Manhunter doesn't really need to be in the movie, again, I get what, what Snyder was going for, though. Um, especially in that scene where he's talking to Lois, but as uh, Martha Kent, I, I think it just takes away from that scene a little bit. And I don't like that he is technically Martha Kent in that scene. It's just... Eh. Um, yeah, what else do I have to say about this one? I, I really enjoy this movie, guys. It's a great comic book movie it feels very nerdy but it also feels like something you can understand um but i just love that Zack snyder's a nerd and that he took his well he didn't take his time technically but like he really cared about the characters he really wanted this to be an epic film and at the end of the day it is pretty epic um yeah i love this one a lot chester snoring He's adorable, guys. I love my dog. Anyways, guys, I, I like this movie a lot. Um, I'm usually at like a 7 or 8 out of this one, I would say. I, I, I'm I, I'm going to go 8. Again, I don't know what I've said about this one in the past, but I am going to add an 8 for this one. It is such a ding-dang solid movie. And again, I, I think some of the issues I have are things that were just wild swings, things that maybe could have been prevented if things weren't rushed. I will say that as well. But yeah, for the most part, a really good movie. I really enjoy this one a lot. Next up, guys, let's talk The Flash. Um, I saw this in IMAX. The, you know, one of the ways, you, you know, they say you should watch a movie like this. Um, and, you know, I had heard a lot of stuff about this movie that it was, you know, the new Dark Knight that uh, special effects weren't great and such like that. Um, it's not the Dark Knight, I will say that. The special effects are not good. Um, Andy Muschietti, the director, did a great job for this, by the way. Uh, he came out and said that they're intentionally bad, at least for the scene, for certain scenes of this movie. I won't spoil it. I will spoil this. It'll be the last thing we talk about in this video, but... Um, Andy Muschietti did say that it was intentional. Um, I don't believe that necessarily because, yeah. So when 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 Flash is going fast at times, it looks bad. And Andy Muschietti said again that it was intentional. But there are moments where he's going fast to the point that everyone is froze, and they look so bad. Which, I guess, would make sense for what Andy Muschietti said. But then there's other scenes where he's stopped time and people look normal. 
They just look like paused people. So it's interesting. I, I, um, the, the, the opening of this movie is great for the most part. Um, it's very Ben Affleck, Batman-centered. Um, and I think that sequence is great. There's a bit that Flash does in that opening sequence, though, that is very CGI, and it looks very bad, in my opinion, and I can't get over it. Um, I watched this movie again last night in RPX instead of IMAX. Again, still a, a better way to watch it than just typical standard format. And I just cannot get over the fact what... I like the idea of this sequence. I'm not insulted by, you know, there's something with a microwave that happens. Some people are insulted by this. Um, some people are insulted by a vending machine. Not insulted. They think it's dumb. The vending machine. I like the vending machine. I like the microwave. I just don't like how bad it all looks. It looks so bad. And again, if it had been said in the movie, like, I see things differently when I'm going fast. Things look like a video game. Maybe this would have been a different story, but it looks bad. Um, the story of this movie is great. I love that Barry is, is traumatized, essentially, by the death of his mother, the his father being put in prison, being blamed for the murder of his mother. Um, I love all that stuff in this movie. I, I like the setup. I like why he's... A, we, if you've seen any trailer, you know he, he's going to another dimension, another multiverse, another world, essentially, another reality. Um, and I do like that. Um, uh, in this movie, there is younger Barry who is very annoying. I did find it not... It worked, I will say that, because we have older Barry, who is annoying at the beginning of this movie. He literally says, oh my god, I am annoying. And he becomes a little bit more mature. Um, and I liked that. And it, it balanced out the tone of this movie. It worked. Um, there's a lot of humor in this movie. I like a lot of the humor. There is so many good jokes. I think there's some jokes that don't fully work, but for the most part, this movie is really funny and it, it works. The humor works for what it's, it's giving us, offering us. Um, let's talk a little bit about Ezra Miller here. He, they do a great job. Um, I, I think the performance was fantastic. I really do. I did not find Ezra annoying, Flash annoying at all in this one, besides his younger self. But again, it's kind of addressed. He's supposed to be annoying. Um, I'm very much someone that people with controversy for movies, I don't ignore it necessarily, but when I'm watching the movie, I do ignore it because so many people, Michael Keaton has worked on this movie. Andy Muschietti is a great director. Um, you know, all the visual effects people, all the costume designers, all, all the costumes look great. You know, the, the production design looks great. There's so many great people that probably worked on, you know, I'm assuming they're great, that worked on this movie and have spent, I mean, this movie was announced in 2014. There's so many people that have been working on this movie and literally given years of their lives working on this movie that I feel that we still need to watch it. I, I get why you don't want to watch it if you are insulted, or not insulted, that if you don't want to support Ezra Miller. I do understand that. But at the same time, I think there's so many other people that we are, what's the word I'm looking for? We are, we are, you know, sabotaging their careers because we didn't like the main actor. Um, so I just, I, I choose to ignore that. There is a line at the beginning of this movie that talks about mental health. Um, right after... Barry, right after Flash saves someone, and it shouldn't have been in the movie, um, just because it is too real world, and it literally feels like something that, I, it just made me uncomfortable both times I heard it. Um, let's get into the Michael Keaton, I guess, of this. 
Michael Keaton shows up about an hour into the movie, and he first shows up with this really bad beard and hair that doesn't work. Um, you know, costumes look great, except for that costume, because the beard and hair doesn't look good. It looks so fake. I can't get over how bad it looked. And then Batman's just kind of in this movie. He's in it quite a bit. He does awesome stuff. Michael Keaton's great. Uh, as you've seen from the trailers, there's a lot of just one-liners in here to um, say them, and they really have no purpose or reasoning behind them, in my opinion. They're just there to be said. It is a lot of fan service, but I don't... It, it I like fan service. It, it is kind of cool. I wish there was more of a reason behind the fan service, because at the end of the day, Batman really doesn't have that much... To, he doesn't need to necessarily be in the movie. Is it cool that he's in the movie? Yes, but... I mean, and then how his character is last seen in this movie. I didn't love it. I didn't think it was worth bringing him back. Um, Cora as Supergirl in this movie is great. Again, she doesn't have a whole heck of a lot to do. She's kind of in the last half hour of the movie. She's great. Uh, I forget the name of the actress, something Kaya or Kaya or something like that. Um, She's great. Absolutely great. She just doesn't have a whole heck of a lot to do. If you're going to this movie expecting to see a lot of Michael Shannon, he's in the movie 15 minutes. I mean, there's a lot of stuff just here for fan service, and it doesn't fully feel like it has a point. I will say, I like the end of this movie. I know a lot of people don't. They feel it is kind of cliche. I don't. Yes, they are fighting people without faces, essentially, but it does something that is unique. It doesn't just battle end. There is much more to it. Um, I will say the trailers have spoiled way too much about this movie. Um, thankfully, I don't watch a lot of trailers, but still, I saw enough to go, wow, this is all in the trailers. And certain scenes that I went, well, that hasn't happened yet, so it's going to happen. And just too much was spoiled in this movie, and I was very disappointed by that. Um, yeah, what else do I want to say about this movie? You know, there's a lot of comparisons to this. With A lot of people are comparing this to Spider-Man No Way Home, a movie that, if you've watched some episodes of my podcast before, you know that I absolutely love that movie. Um, and th th there are definitely some connections. I will say this. I think Spider-Man No Way Home is a better movie. I think Spider-Man no, no Way Home has a lot of fan service. Spider-Man No Way Home brings in other Spider-Men. First of all, they didn't market it. This movie was heavily marketing Michael Keaton, which he does have more of a role in this movie, so I can understand that. But it felt like they, in the trailers and such, it was more Batman almost than Flash. And it's not a Batman movie. It's about the Flash. It's Flash's story. Um, and that might have just been, been because of Ezra Miller, too. I don't know. But the marketing for Spider-Man never shows the Spider-Men. And that, I think that was important. It showed it was Peter Parker, Tom Holland, Peter Parker's story. And I liked that. Um, I will say the motivation, the reason why everything goes down in Spider-Man No Way Home is really dumb. Um, the fact that Peter wants to get into college with his friends goes to Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange goes, yeah, let's do a spell where we brainwash the entire world. Really? And then the fact that he doesn't go, okay, this is what the spell will do. Are you sure about this? I can make different things. You need to tell me up front what they are. That is really stupid. But who cares? It makes, it's, it doesn't, it's just the little thing that we need to make the movie happen. This movie has a better motivation. Barry goes back in time to save his mother, save his father. I like that. I think that is cool. I think that is interesting. I think that is fantastic. But again, the rest of the movie, though, is all fan service with no substance to it. Michael Keaton's Batman's just there. Why is he there? Well, because we wanted Michael Keaton's Batman in here. That's what it felt like. Um, and I just don't think it has any 
purpose, really, at the end of the day. So yeah, guys, um, I really enjoyed this movie. I'm probably coming off like I don't like this movie. I really enjoyed it. It's a really good movie. It had issues with the CGI. It had issues with the fact that a lot of this story just is fan service and has no substance to it. I would say those are my biggest issues with it. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed it. I saw it twice now, both in, you know, premium formats, IMAX and RPX. So it's a good movie. I hate that it's bombing. I really do. I think that sucks and sad. And Andy Muschietti, though, can do any other superhero movies because he did such a fantastic job with this. Next up, guys, uh, No Hard Feelings. I got to see this at the Saturday early showing, almost a week early than what it was supposed to come out as. And boy, the, I think this movie is hilarious, guys. Um, from the director of Good Boys, a movie I also thought was pretty hilarious. Um, I really like this movie a lot. It's not getting the greatest reviews. It's not getting the most horrible reviews, but um, I think it's a really good movie, guys. Uh, if you don't know the plot, Jennifer Lawrence dates a 19-year... Well, she's technically paid a car to date a 19-year-old by her by the, the kid's parents. Um, I get the controversy behind the movie. I really do. If it was opposite gender roles, we would think it's creepy. Um, I don't know. I didn't think it that creepy for some reason. I found this movie so hilarious. There's so many great bits in this movie. Um, since I don't like trailers, I when I went to the theater last night to see Flash, I actually went into No Hard Feelings to see parts of this movie again instead of watching the trailers for, before Flash. Um, I just... I This movie is a comedy. The intention of the movie is to make me laugh, and I laughed a lot during this movie. And I think the humor really does work for the most part in this movie. Jennifer Lawrence is really good at being funny in this movie. Um, I know she didn't, like, improvise or anything like that, but she has good comedic timing, really. Um, does it say the name of the kid? No. Uh, that kid, I believe his name is Noah or something like that. He does great as Percy. Um, Matthew Broderick and I forget the wife's name, but they're great. The parents are great. Is this movie anything, you know, is this one of the greatest movies of all time? No, but it's such a great comedy. Um, I really do want to see it in a theater again with a packed crowd. I had a pretty full theater that I was with, and we were just laughing, and it was so great. And so many moments that I was laughing. It was one of those moments where you're laughing so hard from the, the moment that you maybe missed a couple moments, and that's part of the reason why I want to see it again. There's a lot of great bits in this movie, and I really enjoyed it. Um, it did all right at the box office this weekend. Uh, it has a $45 million budget, I believe, and made like $15 million. It needs to do better than that, but I think this is a movie people should check out. Probably not one you want to take with your parents, but it is a really good movie to spend with your friends, I guess you could say. I, I would do that. Um, yeah, guys, I... Such a solid comedy. Yeah, the, the you know, the plot is a little weird, I guess. It, I'll, I, I won't deny that it's a little different. And again, it is interesting that reverse roles, we would really think this is controversial. And the other way around, it's not as controversial. That is something interesting. Um, it is what it is. Uh, I just found it funny. I really did. Uh, I was laughing throughout this movie quite a bit. Not the greatest movie ever. One of the better comedies I've seen in a hot minute, though. And, you know, that's a good thing, right? We all need some laughs. So, yeah, I'll give this one, as far as a comedy goes, an 8 out of 10. Is there stupid, ridiculous, comedic stuff in this movie that is is dumb, not real world? Yes, but it's comedy. Who cares? There's so many comedies out there that are unrealistic and we think they're amazing classic comedy. So I see nothing wrong with the things that happen in this movie. I just think this movie is just really funny and I really enjoyed it. Asteroid City. Um, if you heard me talk about Wes Anderson, guys, um, I don't like him. I don't like his, his, his humor. I don't like... His movies feel overdone. They feel like he is behind the camera going... Um, guys, look at this amazing picture I'm making. It's so incredible and amazing. They feel pretentious and just too much. He always has 
big cast of people. And what I really noticed from this movie is that most of the time, these big names in these movies don't have anything to do. Um, Edward Norton's in the movie for like five minutes. Jeff Goldblum, I think, says one line in this entire movie. Um, there's so many things like that. I, and, you know, the thing is, I was, as I was watching this too, is in a comic book movie or a bigger movie, if we have a big actor and they say one line, well, that's just pathetic. They didn't use them. They underused them. Well, then Wes Anderson underuses every single character. And I... <laughs> so why is it okay that, that Wes Anderson does, but other movies don't? Again, Tilden Swinton's in this movie... She's really only in it for like 10, 15 minutes. Tom Hanks is really only in this movie for 10, 15 minutes. Uh, Scarlett Johansson's got a decent role. So does uh, Jason Schwartzman. I'd say he's the main character. Then everything after that is just, they're here for 5, 10 minutes and that's it. Um, I like a lot of the humor in this. I, I like this humor more than other Wes Anderson movies. I will say that. There was a couple scenes where I did laugh. Um... But it's all just so stupid and ridiculous, in my opinion. All of it looks like it's a set. And I just don't get why we think this guy is so creative when it just feels so fake. Uh, I just don't. None of, none of these characters feel real. It just feels ridiculous to me. Um, so, yeah, I'm just not a Wes Anderson fan. Uh, yeah. There's, I like Moonrise Kingdom, I like Fantastic Mr. Fox, and that's about it. Some of the humor works in this movie. I forgot, Margot Robbie's in this movie, too. Margot Robbie says, like, two lines. She's barely in this movie. She, I just, I hate that we have all these names on here, and they're not even really in the movie. It bugs me. Um, but yeah, guys, I, I don't want to say too much about this one. The plot of this movie... It's the other thing. This movie is about a play, but it's breaking the third... It, like, Brian Cranston's character is narrating what the play is going to be. Yeah, there's so much going on, and it's just... Yeah. But basically, the basic plot is these group of people are stranded in this city because something happens, I guess you could say. And they're on quarantine. It very much feels like a COVID movie, honestly. In the sense that uh, this is what COVID felt like. It feels like a commentary on COVID. I don't know. I didn't like this movie. If you like Wes Anderson, I think this movie you're going to really like. I just didn't like it. it. It is a funny movie. I will give it that. I did chuckle quite a few times. But even some of the humor there still, too, just bugged me. Um, I'm going to give this one a 5 out of 10. I just... It's not terrible. I get why people like Wes Anderson. I just don't like him. And I just... When I do like him, I will tell you when I like him. I love Moon Rise Kingdom. I love Fantastic Mr. Fox. I do not like this movie. It, it's just... Eh, I will never watch this again. Five out of ten for me. Um, Last one, I believe. Oh, before we talk spoilers. That's right. Um, This is going to be a very long video, and I apologize about that. Um, But here we go. Uh, Next up, guys, The Blackening. Another great comedy... Um, this is a comedy horror movie, but boy, is this movie funny. Um, and I thought that it was going to be a movie that I wasn't going to fully appreciate the humor because I am white as white can get, but I laughed a lot during this movie. Um, basically a group of friends get together at a cabin in the woods and, um, people start dying. So it is a horror movie as well. I didn't feel it was that scary. I'm kind of a wimp, and I didn't feel it was very scary. So um, it's more comedy than it is horror movie, I would say. <sighs> but yeah, people die in this movie, guys. Um, it, it's so much fun. It is kind of meta at points, kind of commenting on black people in movies, in horror movies specifically. Oh, my throat's getting dry. Um, but it is so much fun. I love the commentary. I love the humor in this movie. I, this movie is just a blast. There is some really dumb horror movie stuff that happens, though. You know, when they're like, uh, don't go over there. Don't, don't, don't be stupid. How about you turn on the light, idiot? 
really dumb moments like that. I'm talking like their friend is behind a door. The killer is right behind their friend. And they're trying to open the door for their friend as the killer is like two feet behind them. No, nope, your friend's dead. Let him be dead. Just, they're dead. Don't try opening the door. The killer's gonna get out and kill all y'all, you dumb idiots. Um, but yeah, this is also from the director that did, uh, Tim Story, who did, uh, the Fantastic Four movies and Ride Along and Barbershop. I found that interesting. It's a fun movie, though, guys. I had a blast with this one. I don't want to say anything more. Just that it's really fun, really funny. There, It's really not a scary movie, I wouldn't say. But there are people that die. And there is some gory-ish moments. Nothing too graphic or crazy. But some gory moments, for sure. I had a blast with this one. This might be one of my favorite movies of the year. Um, I think I'm just going to go 9 out of 10 on this one, guys. I'm going kind of big on this one. I really, really had fun with this movie. The uh, only big issue I had was just some really dumb things that happened in the movie that just it was too much you know like i just said with that's literally something that happens in the movie person is here killer is right here and they're trying to open the door to get their friend out but the killer's right there your friend's dead i'm sorry it's the way it is get over it lastly guys i'll talk a few spoilers from flash here um like i said in my non-spoiler section by the way spoilers 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 um like I said, my non-spoiler section, the opening of the movie is great with Batman, Ben Affleck's Batman. Love that. I do not love the baby shower thing. The babies look so fake. The dog looks fake. The nurse lady looks fake. I like the idea of it. And again, if they had just had one line where Flash says, you know, I see things because I'm going so fast, things look rubbery. I maybe could have let it go, but... It looks so bad. It looks so bad. Um, see, I could not stand that. Uh, then getting into, the, you know, the what happened with his mother. By the way, who did kill his mom? It's not explained in this movie. I would have liked some explanation on that. I found that a little weird, too, that we don't know who kills his mom. He doesn't seem to care who kills his mom. He just cares that his dad's innocent. But okay, but your mom was murdered. The, what, did she stab herself? Like, was a suicide? Like, it makes no sense to me. Um, so I, I would like some explanation on that. But again, I like that that's the reason why he goes back in time. He thinks that if he changes this one little simple thing, he can fix it all. And then he's stuck in the other dimension, the other world, and... The moments with, with Barry and his mom are so beautifully done. Nearly made me cry. Not quite. Especially at the end there. That last scene is phenomenal. The fact that she is this sweet woman. That she's like, you know, I know I'm a stranger, but let me give you a hug. And you know, says all the things she does say. Beautiful moment. Um, what else? I, again, Michael Keaton's Batman. When he first shows up, first of all, why is he like a loser now because gotham is one of the safest cities in the world and he has nothing to do like it's not really explained why he was like old man with a beard and hair and why his house is a mess it, it, I, I, i'm assuming alfred is dead in his universe he is that actual actor is in real life but i just didn't i didn't Again, Batman's character, as I said in the non-spoiler, Batman's character, he has no arc. He has no nothing. He's just Bruce Wayne and Batman, and that's it. Um, just, why? He's just in the movie to be in the movie, and I just didn't think that worked. Um, Michael Shannon, he is a very big part of this poster, and he's really not in the movie. He's in the movie for like 15 minutes. I... He's just there, again, to be there because he was in Man of Steel. Um, I didn't see any point in him being in this movie. Supergirl, again, was great. I like that they thought, you know, they were going to go get Superman, and instead they got Korra, Kara, and 
but you know i think in that entire sequence of breaking her out was really fun i like that sequence um again there's some iffy special effects moments um, again, I like the fight at the end. I like that they go, you know, the first time, you know, they, they, they're doing the fight and then Batman and Supergirl die and they go back in time and try to fix it. And the same thing happens again. And there's this realization that, you know what, we can't fix this world, this timeline, this is what happens. Um, I really do like that. And I like the overall message of, you can't change the past. I, I, I think that thing that, that uh, Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne says at the beginning, where our scars make us who we are, we weren't meant to go back to fix our scars. I like that. I really do. I think that is such a, a, a good message for the movie. And like the fact that Barry has to go back and essentially kill his mom. He has to take the tomatoes out so she doesn't live. That's such a... It's brutal. But again, it, the scars make us who we are. Um, I, I, I absolutely love that. I like that we also also got the origin of Flash as well with the chemicals and the lightning. I think that, I think that scene was great. Um, especially with um, younger uh, Barry learning of his powers and stuff like that. That was a great scene. Um, yeah, guys, they never, there's really just not a whole heck of a lot to talk about with spoilers, honestly. The trailers gave away so much. Um, oh, I do want to talk about Batman and his demise. The last words he says in this movie is, Barry says, we can fix this. We can, we, or we can, what does he say? I forget. We can fix it. We can bring you back or whatever. And Michael Keaton says, he already did. He already did. And that's his final words. I just... And the fact that he dies the way he does, I, yeah, I get it. He's fighting to save the world. But at the same time, it just didn't feel right. I, I guess he just came back to be Batman to be Batman. I Like, he didn't... I didn't buy why he was being Batman again. Just because Barry... And he comes back to be Batman before he's realizing that Barry wants to save his mom and dad. He doesn't even hear about the backstory he doesn't hear about that backstory before until they're going to put the lightning in Barry to get his powers back. So I just, I don't know. I didn't love it. Didn't love what they did with Batman. But again, there's a lot of fun stuff here, guys. It's a fun movie. Does it have that much substance to me? No. Again, comparing it to Spider-Man No Way Home, I think Spider-Man No Way Home has more substance. The reason that they have the multiverse is stupid. I will totally admit that. The reason that The Flash has multiverse makes more sense, and it is warranted, and it's great. Um, but I don't like the substance in The Flash, and that's what bugs me. Um, the end credit scene, or the end credit with George Clooney showing up as Bruce Wayne. Again, fan service. What was the point, though? I think it would have made... I think it would have been better if... I hear... I, the, you know, I guess there was... Things happening on the internet that said that Michael Keaton and Supergirl were there. Batman and Superman. Uh, Michael Keaton's Batman was there. Supergirl was there for one. There was another one where Robert Pattinson filmed a scene. I guess there was another one where Ben Affleck did a scene or something. I, I don't know. I've heard so many different things. I, I don't like the ending like that. I, I get what it's going for that he... he Fixed this one little thing to get his dad out of prison. It worked. But now he's got a different Batman. Um, and then the end credit scene was Aquaman. I enjoyed that. And I I like what it kind of set up with these Elseworld movies. Where, you know, everyone's different now. Everything's different. Everything's rebooted. Um, and yeah, we'll see what the future of the DC is. Um, we still have Aquaman coming up this year. I'm interested to see what that will be, um, and I will be talking about that as soon as it comes out. I think I'll be watching Zack Snyder's Justice League again this year, because Aquaman's in it. So, you guys, um, this has been a very long video. I apologize. There was a lot of things that I wanted to talk about, a lot of new things that came out recently that I wanted to talk about. Um, so, yeah, we've talked about them. Um, this week is Indiana Jones, which I will go see in IMAX probably on Saturday. 
Um, I'll be watching all the Indiana Jones movies leading up to that. I have a couple other movies, too, that I should talk about um, that I've already watched and need to talk about. Uh, yeah, guys, if you have anything you'd like to talk about, please let me know. Um, I know that the lighting in this is not spectacular. I know the, the sound is not so great. My microphone broke. Um, I know I need to fix some things, blah, 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 blah. I'm just doing this for fun, guys. I'm kind of doing this so when I, you know, turn 90 years old, I can hear what I... This is my movie diaries. It's essentially what it is. I can know what kind of things I was watching. I don't know. I don't know why I do this, but it's fun. I don't know. It's fun. That's why. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys have a great week. Go see Flash. Go go support this movie. Also, go support No Hard Feelings. Fast X can bomb at the box office. That's fine by me. I mean, yes, a lot of people, again, did work on it, so I don't necessarily want it to bomb. We don't need any more Fast and Furious movies. We need the Flash. That was, that was a cool movie. I would see a sequel to this movie. I would 100% see a sequel to this movie. I would 100% see a sequel to No Hard Feelings or another kind of thing like that. I want that director to do well because I really like Good Boys. Anyways, guys, I'm just talking now. Have yourself a good one. Don't do anything I want to. Keep watching movies, guys. Have a good one. See ya. Bye. How many times am I going to say bye?